Hi, good morning, welcome to the Fly Pfeiffer podcast. It's another day, another podcast. Um, before we carry on, if you don't mind, could you like and subscribe to the channel? So if you like, uh, subscribe and click the wee bell, you'll get notified every time we go live with another podcast. Today is a very interesting one. It's a case that I am totally intrigued with. Uh, I have seen so many clips, so many uh, podcasts, so many books about this, everything. Today, Alan and I are speaking to Dr. Sandra Lean. We're going to spend a bit of time finding out about Dr. Sandra Lean, or Sandra Lean, as she's asked me to call her. Um, I find it fascinating. I find her fascinating. I find the story fascinating. But we'll get into this first, I think, finding out a bit more about Sandra, where she is, how she got to where she is today, why, and then uh, we'll probably spend another hour after that uh, discussing the, the Luke M Mitchell case, which again is fascinating uh, for all the wrong reasons. Anyway, please like and subscribe to the channel, click the wee bell, and uh, I'll speak to you soon. Thank you. James and Alan talk to Dr. Sandra Lean regarding her role in the Luke Mitchell case. Your chat, your way. Let's talk. And we're back in the room. Oof, that was awfully loud. But we're back in the room, uh, back with Sandra Lean and Alan, a.k.a. Just Another Monkey, uh, and myself, James. Um, so this is a bit you all really want to hear. This is a bit you all come to listen to. Um, we're going to speak to Sandra Lean regarding the Luke Mitchell case. And uh, I'm going to hand straight over to Sandra and say, tell us about the Luke Mitchell case, Sandra. Take it as far back as you can so that it's those meaty facts that everybody moans at you about. You know, like the Pat Brown thing that I watched, yeah. you, you let go last night and I watched that. Meaty facts. Facts that are undisputable. Well, going right back to the beginning, it was absolutely 100% clear that the police were going after this lad and I'm talking way before any arrest uh, the stories that were circulating the, the whole hysteria the media the, it was madness, it was absolutely insane and I'm sitting in the middle of it thinking, hang on they've got all this stuff about this lad mm. 14 but nobody's arresting him, he's still wandering about as if as if he's maybe done nothing wrong. <laughs> What's going on here? And time went on and time went on. Um, th there's been a lot of talk about me knowing Luke's family mm. prior to the murder. Now, I don't think it would have been a problem if I had. But the fact is, I did not know these people. I'd never met them. I didn't know Jodie's family. Um, and I think people find it really hard to, to understand why... I would get so involved in something that essentially was nothing to do with me. They, they were no relation to me. I didn't know them. So it's just circumstantial. You're in the same town or the same yes. village or, and that's it. In fact, my, my eldest daughter had just gone up to New Battle High School mm -hmm. that year and Jodie was found just 500 yards behind the school, behind the mm -hmm. wall. And the two paths, they, they, they meet at a right angle. So you've got Rowan's Dyke Path and Lady Path. Uh -huh. And the kids for New Battle High that were coming down to where we lived used Lady Path. Right. So obviously it's a small village, horrific murder, the, the jungle drums have gone ballistic. And I'm thinking, my daughter and her friends walk mm -hmm. that path. Scary really. So, so what's going on? And th there was that hysteria, oh my God, oh my God, there's yeah. a murderer running about. And then... Uh, probably within the week, I would say. The hysteria of there's a murderer running about mm -hmm. calmed a little bit because of the hysteria that it was the boyfriend had done it. So as long as we, if we kept him in plain view, the kids were safe. Right. And I'm thinking, wait, <laughs> <laughs> what if it's not him? Aye. How safe are the kids? Seriously. Um... So that was really the beginning. I knew nothing back then. See, when you cast back, Sandra, do you think, was there more people like yourself with that thought, what if it's no him? Or do you think you're a lone ranger on that? Or do you think, like, people you spoke to or round about you maybe even thought the same? Like, this can't be right. If there were more, 
They didn't say so. Right. Very, very few of them. They didn't say so. And I think that was intimidation. Right, okay. The, the, the outrage and hostility. Uh, yeah, small was town. All you know, geared uh, at them, the Mitchells. Yep. So to come out and say, uh, what if it wasn't him? You were almost immediately judged as taking their side. I'm like, yeah, but what if he's done nothing wrong? Yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with taking the side of somebody that's done nothing wrong? So, so there was that whole, the the aggression, the the anger, and that really, it's still not completely gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you see it yourself in some of the yeah. some of the stuff that comes back, but it has it has dropped away since yeah. 2021. I see some of the stuff that comes back, m- bringing it back to the present day, uh, it's it's people that haven't educated themselves on the story and they're still running in their heads with the media narrative from the day, I think. I think uh, Personally, that's what I think. People that haven't done any research to it, they're just thinking by, oh, no, him, 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 evil, we, whatever. I we, think, uh, again, uh, the uh, question there is why? Why haven't they? It's not difficult now yeah. to find out the other side of this case. Yeah, it's I mean, not... You know, anyone that questions me, why are you doing this? Why are you, why are you interested in that? I just go have a look. Yeah. Didn't, he, didn't he ask me why? It's just intriguing me. I'm I'm fascinated by it. Go look at all the different things. Put the searches into Google. Put the searches into YouTube. Make your own mind up. Yeah, and that's what I do with everybody. But anyway, sorry, I pulled you back. Go back then. Yeah, so yeah. so that was that was the start. Yeah, I knew mm. nothing about the law for a start. I hadn't, I'd, I'd never had any dealings with. The police, the criminal mm. justice system, nothing. I knew nothing about it. Um, and Corrine, it, it was a really weird story. So, so in the Natural Health Centre, we had a, a teenager who helped out on a Saturday. And, you know, she just, she was fascinated by, by what went on there and she helped out on a Saturday. And it turned out that a relative of hers mm-hmm. knew Corrine. So, you know, we were, we were having this discussion in... That's Luke's mum. Yeah, uh, we, we were having this conversation in the natural health centre between the therapists and things, and of course you've got the the, the one side that the guy's gone, Sandra, you've lost your mind. Like, what are you talking about? Um, and then this note comes through the door. It was a Saturday morning. I'll never forget it. Came in, opened up, and this beautiful handwritten mm-hmm. envelope sat in front of me, and opened it, and it was a note from Luke's mum saying. I've heard what your take on this is. So, so, so the wee Saturday girl She's been had right. gone and yeah. said, and then they'd uh-huh. gone to Corrie and said, um, can you help us? So, of course, the, the rest of the guys came in and this letter got passed round and they're all going, don't get involved. Yeah. Do not call that number. I knew the minute I picked it up, I was going to call it. And I'm saying to them, yeah, you're right, you're right. And that's nothing to do with me. And then when everybody left, I picked up the phone and called her. Right. And and that was how I got involved in the first place. Um, <coughs> meeting Luke for the first time. It was clear he was shell shocked. Now we were a good few weeks down the line here. Yeah. And and he came so in. So you met him a way, way back then? Yeah. Before he was even charged. Yeah. He he came in and he, the head was slightly down. Because obviously, was I friend or foe? And back then, there's a ninety nine percent chance I was foe. Yeah. Um, and then once once he realised I was not foe, so polite. And yeah. and everybody that knows him will, will say that you know he's, he's so well mannered, he's so polite. And even in spite of what was going on at that stage, not laid back but gentle. That's the word I'm looking for. Gentle. Yeah. Um, so fast forward, it's now coming up towards the April. So, so Jodie's funeral and all the nonsense with the Sky interview. Yeah. Um, where, I mean, that, that was a trick and it, it was disgusting. That, that guy was asking Luke questions that a policeman would have had to ask under caution. And then they used it against him at trial. I right. mean, it doesn't get dirtier than that. But, you know, we've got that first Christmas out of the way and we're hearing things from the, the defence, not the defence, there wasn't a defence team then, um, but the lawyers had got involved, like, because Luke couldn't go back to school and stuff like that. 
And then I got up one morning in April to take the girls to school. Turned the radio on. A 45-year-old woman, a 15-year-old boy who cannot be named for legal reasons has been arrested and charged with the murder of Jodie Jones. A 45-year-old woman, and I can't remember what age she was, have also been remanded. And, I mean, yeah, I'd been down to Corrine's house, they'd been down to her business. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what do I do? H- how do you get in touch with somebody who's been arrested? Like, What do you do? And I just had to wait until she called later that night after she was after she and Luke's brother were released and they'd kept Luke so they'd had him twice before that they'd, they'd yeah. had him on the 4th of July they'd had him on the 14th of August in the, the section 14 interrogation and he'd come home and on the 14th of April mm-hmm. they took him and Corrine came home without him so so that was so a that, moment that's a year later isn't it uh, ten and a half months. Ten and a half months later, because I was thinking there was the the v- was it the same night? I'm trying to rec- recollect on some of the stories I've watched um, that the same night he was taken, and Corinne was invited to go to the station because they were they had lifted him, and was he taken that night and kept for the six hours or? Oh, going going right back to the first time he's been lifted. Right, the night the, where, in a, the yeah. night of the murder. Um, they took him straight to the police station mm-hmm. and they didn't wait for Corrine to get there. They had him stripped and everything by right. the time she got there. So this is the same night. We're talking matter of hours by the time they've got involved with it. They've lifted him. Less than an hour. Less than an hour. They've got him. He's in their custody. Yes. They've sh- whatever the time period is, I'm not going to know the exact period, hour or whatever. But So they've got the laddie within an hour. They've stripped them. They've got all the evidence. So that's within an hour of anything happening. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Aye. And then... And they've um, got him. They've got his clothes. They've everything. I, I'm assuming they've done under the nails because I've heard the stories. Yes. They've scraped yes. under the nails. They've took hair samples. So fall. Within an hour, he actually... The, the police <laughs> got there in response to the 999 call. The police got there at the wall at 10 to midnight. Right. And they wanted Luke to go back over the wall. And he's like, I'm not going back over there. Thank God he didn't. You know. um, oh, well, <laughs> yeah, he didn't. But he is by then. That, that cop mm. that, that tried to get him to go over the wall mm-hmm. was still going around Dalkeith probably 2018, 2017, telling people that Luke did go back over the wall that night, showed him where the body was, and then threw himself on Jodie's body to account for any DNA. How stupid! Does he think people are? Uh-huh. We've been putting out for years. There was no DNA. Yeah. But this cop for well, what would that be? Fifteen years. Yeah. Going around telling local people that that's what Luke did that night. Anyway, I digress. Yeah, they got there about ten to, um, and the other three were taken up to the back of the school. This cop asked Luke to go over. Luke says, "I'm not going over." Now, this remember, this is a fourteen-year-old kid. Yeah. So the cop climbs over the wall, and leaves Luke completely on his own on this path in the dark until he goes and sees what's there and comes mm-hmm. back and yada 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 and then he takes Luke up to the, the back of the school so we're now somewhere between 5 to midnight and midnight Luke was in that police car and being driven away by just after quarter past 12 mm-hmm. on what basis? yeah on what basis? So, yeah, they took him to the station, they stripped him, they took DNA samples and, and examined his body for injuries and all of that sort of thing. Didn't ask if, if he needed any assistance. Didn't ask if he, you know, yeah. didn't check his mental state, for example. Um, and then when it came to taking that first statement, Corrine had arrived by then. Now, you'd have thought, in the circumstances, she'd be sitting right by his side. Yep. While they question him. They've got this great big room. And one cop takes Luke to that end. And the other cop takes Corrine to that end. And they question them separately at the same time within an hour of Luke finding Jodie's body. Now, the the trauma of seeing what he saw Uh 
and then getting taken to the police station and then getting stripped and all of that. I mean, this is a kid. And then they kicked him out. I think it was 10 to 7 in the morning. They, they kicked him out. Um, the doctor was called and he prescribed these sedatives yeah. for Luke. And then that afternoon, the family liaison officer arrived at the Mitchell household for the first time. Donald Finlay referred to it as the vixen in the hen house, and he was absolutely right. right. People think family liaison officers are there to help the family and keep them informed. That's what I would have thought, aye, to she support the family. And she admitted in court she was an investigating officer mm-hmm. right in the family home. And see all the, the evidence as in his clothes and things like that. Did they keep them on that night or did they give them them back and let them out at 7 o'clock? No, no, they kept everything. They've still got them to this. So that's, well, that's <laughs> I was going to say they've no. still got them <laughs> till this day. No, <laughs> they haven't because they destroyed them <laughs> unlawfully. But they did have them until the end of last year. Everything. So, so here's a lad that they've just taken directly to the murder scene. Mm-hmm. That they're trying to say he murdered his girlfriend earlier that evening. Yep. And... <laughs> Bear with me. Murdered his girlfriend earlier that evening, called her mother's house from the murder scene, then ran out onto a main road to stand there to be seen by all the the passing traffic to try and make everybody think there was nothing wrong, everything was normal. He then goes out with his mates to try and distance himself from the murder. But then when he gets the call saying Jodie's missing... He leads them straight to the body. That's your police line. Yeah. Following this? Aye, aye, aye. aye. Insane. And he's 14. And he's 14. And he's 14. <laughs> 14 year old. Yeah. Yeah. No chance. When, when, so obviously, fast forward and we're at the trial. Um, and I couldn't. He's here. I look. <laughs> he did this. He did this in, at the parliament as well. Yeah. Like, Tipped one of the banners. I'd I, I like to think that the wee lass has got a hand in this as well. Because yeah. she's going to she's going to be the one that fights this. Yeah. Got it? So what was it in JFK? Let, let justice be done or the heavens fall. The top of that says justice and that's for yeah. yeah, that'll yeah. do for <laughs> that'll me. That'll do for you. That <laughs> spins me. Yeah. Yep. Um, see when... No, because you've obviously been invested with the family up to that stage, what was the wee guy's mental health like? Did you see anything? I mean, were you close enough to see that? Because see when we were talking earlier about the mind shattering, mm-hmm. but only when the realisation steps in. Yeah. He must have, there must have been a point where his head just went bang. I didn't get this. Especially, I, do you know what I mean? I don't think it works quite that way with wrongful accusations and convictions because they're so focused on yeah, they've got mean. the wrong guy yeah. so that they're waiting for the next step, waiting for the next step, waiting for the next step. And I, I see this in a lot of cases. So first of all, they're waiting for the, the police to realise they've got the wrong person. Then when they realise the police are going to keep running with it, they think, right, it'll get sorted out at trial. And then they get a guilty and then they think, it's still a mistake, it'll get sorted out at appeal. So, so that that um, collapse of the mind, if it's going to happen, is not going to happen in the any of that time the because they're still. Yeah. And then with the people like Luke and the others that I've worked with, after that first appeal fails, it's forward. What can we do now? What can we do now? What can, and that goes on and yeah. on and on and on. Um, I I couldn't go to the trial because. I was running my own business, um, and I, I couldn't afford to close the business for six weeks. But the day the verdict came, <laughs> I was listening on the radio, and they'd done the thing about um, the moped boys, and Donald Finlay putting it to them. Did you kill Jody? Did he kill Jody? Where were you? What do you mean you can't remember? And I thought, that's it, it's over. Yeah. It's over. Reasonable doubt right there. No matter what other rubbish they threw at it, that's it. The day the verdict came in, I just I actually landed on my knees. That that's the yeah. level of shock, because I was still believing like them, 
that the system would realise its mistake. But the other thing, I think by that stage, that I was acutely aware of, is we're 19, 20 months later, and everybody's looking over there. Yeah. It was him, it was him. Where's the guy that did this? Yeah. And, and now that fear becomes very, very real because I used to take my kids camping in the middle of nowhere and single mum, two little girls, mm-hmm. chuck the tent in and we go. And when I saw how much focus was on Luke and the rubbish that they were trying to use to, to say it was him, there was then that, oh God, yeah. he's, he's still out here and, and they've got everybody convinced in this direction so that they don't think about that. Um, never went camping in the world with the kids. After Again, that, after after that. shuts everything down. Yeah. It's that whole look into the eyes. No, right, three, two, one, you're under. You're just going to, oh, right, okay. Yeah. At what stage? I mean, obviously, now that you've saw everything that's in here, that you've done, at what stage did you think, hang on a minute? Because, obviously, they're saying, look, him, mm-hmm. as in look with your eyeballs, it's look. At what stage do you think, hang on a minute? No. Or did you believe for the very get-go, that's not been that young man who's done that? What what point did it set into you to think? Uh, uh, really, right from the beginning, um, my biggest question was: if they're so sure it's if they're so sure it's him, why haven't they arrested him? Mm-hmm. So so that was the so start. It yeah. 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 Um, when I saw what they were trying to use, <laughs> he's back again. Sorry, I'll get it. When I saw what he was trying to use, what they were trying to use as evidence. I was actually thinking, well, what do, how does that prove anything? What, what is that? It doesn't prove anything. Yeah, how do you come to a conclusion on that? I was also aware of a lot of the stuff that they were dismissing or ignoring or um, telling people it wasn't relevant. And again, I'm thinking, well, hang on. If people are coming to you and saying, I saw this guy at this time, in this place. And you're supposed to be investigating a murder and you're telling people we're not interested in him. Why are you not interested in him? Yeah. So so right from the off, there was all these... Because I was, I was so local, right in the middle of him, um, it, it was clear to me that there was, there was something very strange going on here. And then as time went on, and especially when it came to the trial, and I'm seeing this rubbish about bloody parka jackets and speaking oh, yeah. clocks and and I'm like where is this evidence that this boy killed somebody I'm not hearing it I'm not seeing it so yeah I would I would say certainly by by the end of the trial probably before that actually because I, obviously I was aware of mm. the, the so defense I mean, be, being that close to Obviously, the family and the, in the area as well. Yeah. Well, you, you must have been able to sense something. See me, I'm, I, I didn't pride myself on character like with the discussion about no, no, you just judged me. But I think I would be able to look at a fourteen-year-old laddie and see something because you've got E. That's the scene. That's the individual. Then you've got the relationship and all the rest of it. And then you look at B, and it's like trying to fit Jimmy Savile into his role. And you think, well, I see where that fucking fits, but it's, you no. Know, when I saw it at the time, I thought, no. Even though the pitch that they were making up with him, his musical interests and da da da, because he's a weirdo doing that. I'm a fucking weirdo, but I never done it. And I, it, I at think what point do you actually? No, the, obviously, the, when the circus rolled into town, mm-hmm. you could see the fucking clowns. They were everywhere around the bit, but nobody really had a look into. Let's turn the table here and let's see if we could actually put that wee boys. Like you're saying, his snowboarding shoes or whatever it is. Could he do this? I just, I, I couldn't see it. Couldn't see it. But like you say, when he's, he's nice, he's, he's a, a, a wee gentleman, so to speak. And you think, no, I've saw the Jekyll and Hyde, and usually there's something there, yes. but you cannot hide that. Yeah. To me, with, with the de- limited details that we have, obviously you've got a better insight. That was horrendous. 
that wee lassie must have suffered. I couldn't see that wee boy being able to inflict that kind of pain. Personally. It's, it's something I had to learn over the years is what I feel about it has to be put to the side. Oh, definitely. And, yeah. and it has to, to be, yeah, yeah, has to be right, no matter what you feel about it. Yeah. You know, he, he appears to be a really mild-mannered, gentle mm. kid. But mild-mannered, gentle appearing people have done horrific things in the oh, past. You absolutely. Know. Um, but mm. it's 20 years in June and in all that time, in everything I've seen, all the people that have spoken to me over the years, I have seen nothing that suggests that Luke was involved. Mm. Now, yeah. 20 years is but a long time to keep everything covered up if you're involved for, for in something. No, slip the facade. Yep. Even a glance. Yeah, that's yep. I mean, it's something. The, it's the Jekyll and Hyde and me. Somebody coming out of prison or something saying, oh, he tell me this, he ah, yeah. me that. And, yeah. and you yet know. you see the prisoners, ex-prisoners online going, I was in prison with him. Aye. And it's the opposite. You know, the, yeah. and, and the guards believe him. And uh-huh. you know, all of that, he's got a lot of respect in there. For, for See, I appreciate ground. everything that, that, that you've done, and it is that thing where no, no, you have to remove all that to do all that. That my thing is just your your perception of what you saw. Did you ever see it? And I totally appreciate that. From, it has from to be that way. yeah, from a personal perspective, no, yeah. no, no, just just um, th- there was there was nothing. Yeah. Now you got to remember, I didn't know Luke. Prior to the murder, yeah. um, from everybody I've spoken to that did, that nature, that laid back, uh. shrug nature, was there previously. But from when I met him onwards, I never saw. I did see anger, and I'm not, uh-huh. I'm not going to deny that. I'd have been bloody angry as well uh-huh. in the circumstances. D- do you distinguish between anger and frustration? I know that you personally know the difference. Because um, you get so frustrated. But see, see, we like myself. My, if, if you see me being very vocal, very agitated, da, 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 that's frustration. See, mm-hmm. when I'm angry, nothing. Yeah. You get nothing out of me. Yeah. Because you just you know you deal with yourself. And I think, speaking to you, I think you deal with that yourself. So what do you think you saw in him? Was it a frustration or was he really going to angry? Oh, no. Justice? I mean, frustration. Badly worded. He, he was... I'm talking about before he was arrested, obviously. And it it was aimed at the media. Oh, who People say, oh, they didn't do themselves any favour. You try living with that yeah. for all that time. It was horrendous. I went to um, I went to visit Corrie one night. And I'm trying to... It might have been... It was just after Luke was arrested. And media, six, ten deep right along the outside of their house. Oh. And I, I went to leave. They, they weren't there when I got there. They'd arrived in between times. And I went to leave when Corrie was, she had the jacket. Then put that on, put the hood up, because it'd be all over the papers. And at that stage, I was completely behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. So I went out with this hood up, which really annoyed me, by the way. Uh-huh. Why should I not be able to just walk to my car? The following day, they had this story about Corinne Mitchell leaving her house after whatever it was that had happened. So they it thought was you me? It was you that left it. It was me. <laughs> yeah, just... Life through a lens, eh? Uh, mm. And we all know how obscured the lenses can be nowadays, oh God, eh? Yeah. I mean, even then, probably more so. Crazy. So, that was the, the trial, mm-hmm. the conviction, and then that sense of, we've got to appeal. Yeah, and I've said this so many times. I thought this was this is how naive I was. Right, we've got on the legal team. We'll get this sorted, and he'll be home in a year. Eh. That's that's how it's done, isn't it? And then the trawling through treacle, trying to deal with a legal team who will not speak to you. Right. They'll speak at you. Right. So I'm putting this stuff together, and I'm giving it to Corinne or Luke, and. He's passing it on to the legal team, and the legal team are like, we don't work with the likes of that. Yeah, they've moved on or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. S- so then there was all that. Um, it actually took three year, three years to get to appeal. It was two thousand eight mm-hmm. before it got to appeal. 
and then sitting there listening to the utter nonsense that they used to argue away the appeal points. So, for example, um, James Faulkner, condom man. Yeah. Mm. We found out about him. So Luke's convicted January 2005. We found out about condom man in 2006. <laughs> this is important because there's, there's quite a few people have had comments about this, so I want to make this absolutely clear. The Crown found a full DNA match because Mr Faulkner had been arrested uh-huh. for another matter and his DNA ran through the database. And it throws up a link to, to the condom. condom. Yeah. So spitting feathers, they have to tell the defence, oh, we found a link to that condom and it's no look. Yeah, cheers, guys. So this goes back to the Court of Appeal and the fact that they were actually in that guy's house the morning after the murder about his brother's hoodie. I never even asked if there was another male in the house, but that, that's another story. Yeah. Um, get this to appeal, and we'll found contributor of condom after, well, what was that, 2006, after th- three years after the murder. Yeah. And the, the Crown guy stands up in court and said, it was no match whatsoever. Uh, it was your guys that brought us the match. Yeah. How, did, how did he get away with that? And I still look back on that. I actually look at the newspaper coverage and I think, where was, where was Luke's legal team mm-hmm. when he stood up there and said it was no match whatsoever? And this is where this court etiquette that we were talking about and yeah. them all being, the you know, speaking their own language and everything, um, it would it would have been, it just would never have happened for Donald Finlay to say of John Beckett, you're a liar. You right. cannot do that professional to professional. Uh-huh. So Donald Finlay's had his chance, he's had his say, and then boom, <coughs> this guy gets up and says there was no match whatsoever. And Corinne and I are looking at each other like, they gave us the match. Uh. Likewise, um, the Mark Cain thing where they said there was no such essay right. um, about killing a woman in yeah. the woods. The way that was argued at appeal was that the, the essay was entitled Killing a Woman in the Woods. And they argued and argued and argued that there was no such essay. So no essay entitled Killing a Woman in the Woods. When they started destroying the evidence and we got the list of all the stuff, they're absolutely right. There was no essay entitled Killing a woman in the woods. Uh-huh. There was two versions of a story about killing a, killing a woman in the woods, entitled "No Remorse." Wow! So you got the title wrong. Nah, yeah. you know. uh-huh. this is this sort of trickery that that is that is passed off as justice, and I think a lot of people, especially the ones that throw, "Oh, he's been through a trial. He's been through two mm. appeals or whatever." Yeah, but look at what they're doing with these processes. They're not what you think they are. Yeah. It's, I can't fathom I can't fathom how at that point they didn't say, well, it's no being this guy. So do you think that they got that far invested their cell that they couldn't backtrack? I think that's part of it. I think um, because they, they went for Luke from the off. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, like, before... Yeah, before Jodie's body was found. And that's interesting. I've never thought about that before. Uh Because Jodie was reported missing. The police got to her mum's house at 18 minutes past 11. And the police officers left that house under the impression that Jodie had left at tea time with Luke earlier that afternoon. Now, yeah. So, So at that point... They've got this misinformation, and then 18, 15 minutes later, uh-huh. they get the call that they found a body. So with that information, and Luke's found the body, because they did, they did think it was just Luke that had found the body. They didn't know that the, other, the others had been over the wall, because they didn't ask them. Aye. Um, so oh, I left her at tea time, and now he's found her behind a wall in pitch darkness. It must have been him. So a match. that's it uh-huh. from the off. But 
because they ran with that, well, we know they screwed up the crime scene. They, they, yeah, yeah they, they just messed up everything. <laughs> and I think by the time they realised that it wasn't him, because the DNA came back with nothing, they're like, oh, yeah, what are we going to do now? There's no going back on yeah. that. You kind of go back that's and it, put it. it right. And I, I don't mean put it right as in as in not pursue the wrong guy. I mean, you can't undestroy the evidence. Yeah. yeah. And the balls up that they've made probably by thinking that it was him. And they don't need any other yeah. form of thought. It's him, it's him, it's him. And they've walked all over it, the mistakes that were made on the scene, I guess. Aye. We were talking earlier about um, Stephen Kelly. Mm-hmm. I, Janine's Jody's sister's boyfriend so he'd been over the wall yep. and he and Janine and the granny were taken up to the, the police car park immediately and all they took was their names and addresses they didn't even ask them about being over the wall yeah. so they're all there in the car park and they're hugging relatives and everything and then they all get trundled up to the local police station not the one that Luke was taken to and then somebody takes the decision that they're all to be trundled from there to Jodie's mum's house because they're not going to question them. They're only questioning Jodie's mum and her stepdad. And then eventually they go, oh yeah, we better get a statement for these guys. That's when they finally found out they'd been over the wall. Uh-huh. So so just bear in mind Stephen Kelly's clothing. Right? Yep. So, so far, they've been in the car park and um, had contact with all these extended members of the family. Then they've been taken to the police station in a mm-hmm. police car. Then they've been taken back to the granny's house. And the granny who has actually... Sorry, no, Jodie's mum's house. Aye, sorry. right. Uh, yeah, but but the granny and, and Janine, uh-huh. both of whom... Well, the granny was over the wall and she touched the and body. And cradled the body, allegedly. Yeah, right. and she's still in yeah. the same clothes. Yeah. So so the, the, the opportunity for transfer there is, is enormous. But then they decide, we're going to take Stephen Kelly's shoes. I have no idea why, out of everybody, they decided Stephen Kelly's shoes. So, yeah. he's still wearing the same clothes that he was wearing when he went over the wall. He's now in Jodie's mum's house. Mm-hmm. They then put him in another police car, drive him to his dad's house in the same clothes and the same shoes to get another pair of shoes because they want to take his shoes for evidence. I think they were a tad too late. Uh-huh. Now, this Stephen Kelly is Jodie's sister's boyfriend. Yes. Am I right? Jodie's sister's boyfriend who does actually have a DNA marker on Jodie's top that she was wearing. Full DNA profile. Full. Right. Full DNA profile. And and they screwed up with that as well because um, they first of all tried to say it was washing machine transfer. Yeah. Let's not even go there. Um, and then the a lot of people have asked about this, this rainwater transfer. Where did that come from? <coughs> yeah. And the they inadvertently implicated Stephen Kelly further uh-huh. because there, there were partial samples yep. on other parts of the T-shirt, on Jodie's bra, you know, various other bits of clothing. And the, the, to try and explain that away, they said, well, you know, rainwater obviously transferred this stuff. Right. Well, it didn't come down in the rain. No. So it had to be transferred for somewhere. And we've only got one full DNA sample on the clothing, and it's Stephen Kelly's. Yeah. So essentially, even though these partials couldn't identify anybody, the prosecution itself implicated them further by saying that re- the other thing, of course, with the rainwater theory, uh-huh. is the bodily fluid would have to have been wet in the first place for it to be transferred thus. So not an old trace from washing machine transfer. It would have to have been wet. And they just implicate them further. Mm. And then that goes nowhere as well. That's the frustration, you know? Yeah. How, 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 though? If, if we cannot see that, and we are not these trained professionals at the time, or I'm not anyway, how, how can that not go any further? How can that not be, oh, wait a minute, there's nothing for uh, person A, but we've got person B that's popped into that, and he's... It's all over the place, mm-hmm. or it's there. It's not all over the place, that's wrong I meant to say, but yeah. there is a trace of it there, and it matches 100%, but we've got none for the main, you know, the culprit, yeah. culprit or the main accused. Again, I, I've 
thought about this a lot over the years, mm-hmm. and I think by the time, by the time they got to that stage, they knew. Yeah, I'm just going to say it. They mm-hmm. knew they were never going to get a conviction for certain other people that might have been persons interested in this case. Right. Either because um, mental health yep. or because connections needed to be maintained or because they were people that knew the system. Right. And had there been evidence to be collected and they slipped off the hook right at the beginning because they went straight after Luke. They knew these people that knew the system would have made sure there was nothing. (laughs) Nothing to be found. Mm -hmm. So uh, you got Kelly's DNA, but what what we don't know is what his other connections in the bigger picture were. So it was easier to get the wee lad that knows nothing about the system that's involved in none of it so you're not going to get a fight for him other than it was me because he doesn't know how it works and and that I think is how they got away with so much then again you're saying like if we can all see it we didn't we didn't back in 2005 or 2008 was that because we weren't allowed to see it at the time and it's only coming out now? I think it's afterwards. Be- yeah, the, yeah, the way the media presented it at the time, um, even when it was questionable, it was, it was reported in such a way that made it seem reasonable. Mm-hmm. A bit like that thing, um, I kind of think who was that did it? It was supposed to be a, a fair coverage of the story. And they took Luke to the station and it... Yeah, you see, that sounds dead reasonable. They look, took Luke to the station. Mm. Why did they take Luke to the station and not the others? Yeah. But when it's reported in that, nothing to see here. Yeah. yeah. It's bizarre. <laughs> it is <laughs> the most bizarre case ever. It really is. And there's a lot of podcasts for this side of the fence. And what gets me as well is there is none that I have been able to find from the other. I think there's one. Is there one? <laughs> oh, right. Well, I've not even been able to find that one. But I'll there see is if I can find it. I'll send you the link. Right, send me the link. Please do. And that as well. You know, there's there's not just one or two podcasts now. There's like yeah. there's got to be 50, 60 or thereabouts anyway. Yeah. I mean, okay, maybe an exaggeration slightly, but there is tons of information. There is tons of podcasts. Yeah. Everyone's singing for the same hymn sheet, if you like. Yeah. Everyone's... You know, as best twenty years. You're, I'm asking you to talk about twenty years of your life and trying to get you to get it co- chronological. What's the word? Chronological. <laughs> in a chronological <laughs> order. In order. Aye. I mean, that must be difficult. But you're good at it because you've spoke about it for so long. You're so twenty years invested into it. It beggars belief that there is not an argument for the other side apart from one that you've just told me about. Mm-hmm. And and that one, it, it does the same thing. It tells the lies uh-huh. and tries to knock out the, the information we've since uncovered yep. uh, and then and then turns personal and it's the deluded supporters and yeah. the, the me in this to make money out of other people's yeah. misery and I mean like maybe an argument that tells us why the, the information we've uncovered doesn't suggest that he's innocent from your side would yeah. be a good thing, but never seen one. Never comes. No. no. I find it fascinating. Again, it's not the it's not the wee man himself because you can remove him from the equation. It's all the evidence that's there. Yeah. That just shows that it's wrong. Mm-hmm. There's something wrong. It doesn't matter who you are, where you are, what your stance is, what your beliefs are, what your hatreds are. Stepping away from it all just to look at all the things which that side would call the fact. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they would convict you and I on one yes. of the facts. Yes. Right. Well, here's a guy 19 years on circumstantial evidence. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, here's a, th- here's a circumstance that they could never explain. Um, the purse. Mm-hmm. So, so there's a step at the bottom of the V-brake. <laughs> the wall. <laughs> that, that they were ah. using to get... O- the police were using to get over the wall. Right. Um, so they, they didn't take the, the blood for testing. Because it probably 
probably been contaminated. Who contaminated it? Oh, yeah, the police. All right. Anyway, um, 12 days into the inquiry, somebody finds, finds a purse under this stone that they're that using as a stepping using. stone. How did it get there? This is a closed murder scene yeah. at this point, 12 days in. But the cards and everything have never been cancelled. It's never been reported missing. And who, who loses their purse? Doesn't they cancel And doesn't they notice for 12 days? So that would leave the suggestion that that purse got there at some point mm -hmm. during that period when it was supposed to be locked down under police control. Wow. Have we had an answer for that purse? 20 years later? Nope. Still, I mean, whose purse was it? Does nobody know? Yes, they, they um, traced the owner, who I've never been able to find any connection with her in the case, so she wasn't a police officer, member of the public, and that's as far as we've ever been, ever been able to get with it. Very bizarre. What mm. was a member of the public doing? Inadvertently dropping their purse. Right at the viewpoint. Yeah. yeah. And, and not just dropping it, they're putting it behind a boulder. Do you know the, the yeah. best thing? I mean, again, it's, it's that um, every target you've ever watched, you can put that many scenarios together when you watch all the documentaries and everything else, and mm. you think, no, oh, hang on a minute, do this, do that, do that, and you can come up with far, far better yeah. uh, than just the, the, the boyfriend. Yeah. I could, I could, I mean, the biker guys. I just spun my head because I was always into motorbikes and there is no way I'm leaving my motorbike lying on a path. Not somebody a will chance. find it, somebody mm -hmm. will steal it. It's just too many things was just silly and you yeah. think, you know. Yeah, and the fact the fact that um, they couldn't remember where they were. Well, if you've been down that area, you've got the path, there's a field on that side, the school's up there, there's a path over in the front, their house is over there, or there's the other side of the wall. So the house is there, the bike's here at the wall, mm -hmm. and they don't know where they were. <sighs> Again, no, that, that was the granny, wasn't it, alleged that she had told them not to come forward or something? She, is that right? According to John Ferris, she yeah. told them not to come forward because they were on the path too early. Too early. Now, this is in the first five days. Mm. How did anybody know what was too early? They had no... You know, they hadn't they hadn't decided on a time of death by then. So um Jody was apparently initially they said she left at half past five, then they said she just she left it just after five, then they said she left at ten to five. These guys lied about the time they were on the path and I think they said it was quarter past four to to five o'clock or quarter to five, four o'clock to a quarter to five, something like that. So they lied about it. They made it nearly a, an hour earlier. But wait a minute. If there'd been some weirdo hanging about, uh. they might have seen something. Why Why would you tell them not to come forward uh. if you knew they'd been on that path at any point that day? So the story, story is that, oh, you, you, no, it couldn't have been any day you because you were there too early, so it doesn't really matter. You didn't need to tell them anything. Apparently. How bizarre. It's, it, it, I'm going to say what it's making me think, right? Oh and no. Uh, uh, We're uh, in jail. I know. I should, <laughs> never, I should never open my gob. I get it. I get it. But it's making me think, right? Just with all the things I've seen, the talk in the day, what you're saying now, what other people are saying, my head's burling thinking there's been some horrific family incident that the top of the peg has said, this is what we're going to do to sort that. We've lost one, let's not lose something else. I'm no any kind of legal guy. That's just what the first thing that is jumping into my head about this. There is some sort of major family, family closing that incident happened. And it's just pff, spiraled for there. That's my thought on it. With foot pointing any fingers or saying anything, it just seems like this is a, a an internal family drama 
that yeah, has the, just exploded. The conspiracy thing has to come in because nothing, yeah. <laughs> nothing that the legal team convicted this lad to and actually works. Aye. The rest of it does. Mm-hmm. It's where conspiracy overrules 100%. So Aye. that story works. The wee guys with the bike, where are they? W- no, Aye. if they were there, roughly. If, no, all the things that I've heard and so and all the other things and just repeating them as they were, is the bike's part there. How do you get something for A to B? You could carry it, but oh, it's awfully heavy. Well, put it on the bike. We'll use the bike. And then when you disappear, are you doing that thing there? That works in my conspiratorial head. No bother at all. Rather than just some frenzied bang, bang, bong, that's yeah. it. Yeah, it is it's a route I anything. don't go. And, and I've been no. quite careful not That's to go. And you, you shouldn't. Can you, you can't, yeah. Sandra. Yeah. You, you're a mm. professional we criminologist. Just we're, we're just a pair of people <laughs> talking about this, yeah. But I think so we can imagine that as yeah. more I can fucking plausible why. than Pat Brown's fucking idea anyway. <laughs> you know? No, no, Pat Brown. Sorry, aye. Sorry <laughs> to bring that up again, but... <laughs> Jesus. Uh, I, I, I think the, the thing... So, for example... Um, Joseph threatened to batter Ferris. Yeah. And and Ferris, so so much so that Ferris had to leave the area. And we're, we're not just yeah. talking about lay low for a couple and of And Ferris days. is one of the bike boys. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. So so straight away, if nothing else, you've got interfering with witnesses. Yeah. Intimidation of witnesses. But here's, here's where it got quite bizarre. And I, I don't think a lot of people picked up on this. In court, Ferris said it was Luke's brother that threatened to batter him outside the court well we've got a problem here because uh-huh. Luke's brother's escorted by a policeman every time he comes in and out of court uh-huh. and he and Ferris were never in and out of the court at the same time so th- this is the thing that you see all the time the switch and it's done so quickly that people didn't notice so from Jody's brother, switch it's Luke's brother. Yeah. It was never Luke's brother that threatened Ferris. It was always Jody's brother. Then we've got the story about the psychological report yeah. that you know puts the brother uh, under psychiatric care and violent outbursts and everything else, and that goes around the whole local area that it's Luke's brother, right down to the the psychologist writing the report, yeah. who has passed the wrong information and thought it was Luke's brother. And then we find out it's Jody's brother. Jody's brother. Switch. And this goes on again and again and just, just switch it, switch it, switch it. Everything that, that they try to project onto the Mitchells, yeah. you will find Spins. in Jody's own family. Mm. That was one of the big ones that got me as well, because I think that come latterly, is, um, I think it was the big Gladi 5 his one, that he'd done his podcast. Mm. <laughs> Did you not see that one? Huh? Was the one that, uh, you saw I've it. I've seen his eye, yeah. But the brother, I never really got all that. And then the knife and the skip and all these yeah. things. That, hang on a minute. Yeah. Well, this, this is, to me, it's fucking relevant indeed. But when he says that the, the laddie was the way that he was and he got <laughs> removed and he's violent and all of this, I mean, that's all, you know, that must be provable. That he was that way, and there was history there, and you think, well, hang on a minute, surely he is better to fit this. Uh, well, I've, again, I've my seen mind can conjure up a better story yeah. than that. I d- the, the hardest thing for me, again, I would never say that this lad had never done it, mm-hmm. but I can find a lot more of the people that's involved, the characters in this fucking movie that unfortunately lost a young lass of life. I can see better scenarios that work. I can't work that one, yeah. if that makes more sense. Yeah. I can see the brother, I can mm. see the biker guys being involved, I can see all that, I can see the conspiracy between, between the family, look, let's lock down, let's batten up the hatches, <laughs> da 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 I just can't see this one. And like you say, it's just the 14-year-old lad and his mum, we has no idea what this crazy-ass system is. It just doesn't work out. That's my hardest battle. Yeah. I, yeah. Think that, I think, Alan, that's exactly where the majority of people are now is exactly that thought process because through all these periods of things that have happened, like lockdowns and everything like that, everybody's had time to sit back, start thinking, start looking logically at stuff. So if this was a great reset, you've fucked up somewhere, excuse (laughs) my language. 
people are. I mean, the majority of the people that I saw at the protest are of that train of, that train of thought, I would say. Yeah. Without actually speaking to them and asking them, I would st- you could see it, you could feel it. People aren't on board. Was so that I'm narrative that you're talking about? Yeah. I'm not interested in your trolls and things trolls, like that. Yeah. Just be a troll if you want, but fuck me, turn the table and just have a look. Yeah. Put that wee guy's shoes on and have a look and see yep. where, how, when. Then put one of the shoes on the any of these other mm-hmm. characters that's involved in this great trickery that's happening. And you'll see a lot more for their eyeballs than you will for their. I just, honestly, it confused me at the time. But I know the system. I know the system is, you know, you did say, I say it's broken. I think it's crippled. It's been a long time. It only serves them and what they do. And when they fuck up, they're not putting their hands up. No, no chance. Like you say, you don't question them. You don't question the legal team. Who the fuck are you to question them? They're very well invested. We've been here for so long, da da da. So are you to call them fools and make a, an arse of their system? No, you never question their system. But unfortunately, now, no, this just is wrong. I've saw that many injustices that I've known it's wrong. So for me, I, I would never have got invested at all. I love the fact that you've no let go, and lots of other people aren't willing to let go. But that system will swally things. Mm-hmm. I, I take my hat off to you just for keep going. Because again, somebody's life got lost and somebody else is, is spiralling away out there. I think that so it's, it's one of the things that, that the, the naysayers lose sight of. That Jody never got justice either. No. And, and Fuck no. Even, even if... I'm inclined to think it's her knocking that banner or more than him. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I'm sorry, but I, I, I think there's certain movements in a spiritual manner, a lot of, whether that's right or wrong, I don't know, that will flick to switching. We need her. She's going to dedicate 20 years of her life here. We need him. He's going to dedicate that amount of his time. So the the y- owner of y- this golden thread, I think we're stitching and weaving Aye. society back to where mm-hmm. it should be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Because that whole... Let's get it under the carpet, under the table. There's just a big hump, and somebody like yourselves come along saying, "That doesn't look right. I'm going to trip over that. I'm going to have a look. I'm going to move that." No, whoa, whoa, you can't touch that. And then somebody else is having a wee peek here, there, and everywhere. And all the time, we're no going away for the the story of what happened there and then, yeah, and how it just keeps going. I love the fact that uh, spiritually, if that would be the word. He's happy with us. No. Nobody's happy. I think that's what I was going to say earlier. Um, it gives you an idea. <coughs> excuse me. Gives you an idea of how well put together their cover-up processes were. Yeah. That this story stood for so long. Aye. You know, I mean, I wrote No Smoke in two thousand. I wrote it in two thousand five six, and it, it came out two thousand seven eight. And it was just ridiculed. Yeah. You know the di- the difference between then and now is is unbelievable, but look how long uh. that house of cards managed to stay standing, and and that's all done. That's all, yeah. Uh. Let's let's take people away from reason and fill them with emotion, anger, hate, you know, rage. You know how to stop that. Yeah. And while they're all distracted with that, they're they're thinking mind, the reason in mind is out of gear because yeah. they're so focused on that. That's how they managed to keep this story going for all those years and I don't know if it was just the point of critical mass in 2021 um, given lockdown, yeah. given the this, the upsurge of interest in like making a murderer in the States uh, you know, all these things came together at the one at one time and suddenly, all these people went, wait, what? Yeah. What? I never heard that. Yeah. Uh-huh. Never knew that. Yeah. I, I mean, there was... I mean... Uh, <laughs> aye, sorry. I'll Jordan, Jordan's podcast, when aye. he'd done it, and I think he'd done it with Scott. Yeah. With Scott, he did that. That was, to me, mm-hmm. there was bits there that I was like, well, hang on a minute. Yeah. Rewind. I'd never fucking heard that before. Yeah. There was one bit where Scott was saying that, no the person, they've come around here and they went up there and they saw this and they saw that and you're like, but hang on a minute, rewind and give me the, the other side of that because if I'm driving, I'm looking in the rear view mirror, how the mm. fuck can I see behind me? Yeah. <laughs> That's when you've literally got your eyes in the back of your yeah. head for you to be 
a witness that can corroborate anything other than you're a tortoise because you can spin your head 360 mm-hmm. fucking degrees and see what you know. And again, the, the, the whole thing Never about heard that. The, the witness coming round the bend and seeing what she saw and everything else, that was there in court That's because I mean. Donald Finley said to her, which direction were you driving in? And she was like, what do you mean? He said, well, where was the New Battle High School sign? Now, now huh. that was actually quite smart on his part because there was only one. Right, so, so if you're coming in East Houses, the sign is on the left-hand side if you're coming this way, uh-huh. right? And then, and then you come to the path. If you're coming the other way, you come past the path and you see the back of that sign. Well, that's, that's what um, the guy said then, and that's, to me, she came and went that way, yeah, and the so path was back here. Yeah. How the fuck do you do it between the path? Mm-hmm. I, I didn't get it. But again, yeah. news I never had. N- yeah. N- it was never revealed to me through that whole whole thing. The the skip with the knife, I thought, my God, how can you just say, oh, God, it was just an old shitey kitchen knife. I don't know how much of that's true, but again, it's just throwing extra parts in. Again, no to deviate that whether Luke done it or Luke didn't do it. I just want to know everything that was involved in that because I know that the system, as it worked and as it played out, failed everybody mm-hmm. because it, it, it's just nuts, absolutely nuts that the anybody could actually convict on that. The stuff that we found out, I mean, Scott's been amazing. He's, he just will not let things go. You know, yeah, if he's, if he's on to something, yeah. he'll find it. Yeah. Um, so it was Scott that ended up finding out about the knife and the skip and getting the witnesses actually to go on record and, and tell them about yeah. it. Uh, and then then we got the, the destruction of the evidence stuff. Mm. And there's the knife in the evidence, which is, this is the weird thing. That then corroborates what these guys are telling us. Uh-huh. So we've destroyed the evidence but proved that these guys were telling you the truth about what was in the evidence. That is literally how that worked. It's like it's like the same with the, the, the demise of the wee house of cards. They're bringing it about yourself. And they, yeah. they want to put their hand up and say, but listen, he's managed to find that that, and you've actually got it listed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then there's that, and you've actually got that there. And the, the, like you say, they're still like... The, the other oh parka. Wasn't me. Uh, that was a blinder. All the way through this impression that Luke Mitchell was the only one that had a parka, and that's why he was so identifiable in said parka and there was no other parkers in the in the entire investigation uh, there was no parkers at all because they didn't have one before they the murder. but anyway yeah. um you know and and at trial a uh, craig dobby was asked how many houses were searched under warrant and he says just the one and then he goes oh no wait there was another one so it's Luke's mum's house and Luke's dad house, dad's house. Right. Searched under warrant, right? We get the lists for, for the destroyed evidence. But looky here. Parker jacket. Prior to the murder. Where did they get it from? Oh, a search warrant for a completely different address. <laughs> and then we find out that it's another kid in Luke's school that definitely did have a parker jacket. So they get the search warrant, they go and take his jacket right. and disappear it so that they can maintain their illusion his own that, illusion. Mm. yeah. Stinks. It's horrible, isn't it? It's, <laughs> it's really horrible. horrible. Hey, hey. See, for myself, I couldn't be you inside your head after all this time. I would be going, fucking bananas. Yeah. Just the wee bits that I've heard because I do, whether it's the empath in me, whether it's a monkey that just sees injustice and thinks, no, this is wrong. I'd want to smash the cage. I'd, I'd want to rattle as many cages as I can because there's people at the top of the tree that can do something about this. Even just to reopen it, have a look. The guys that know that they lied, why keep going? Mm-hmm. The biggest thing for me, and if we do stay on spiritual, if they think for one fucking minute they're going to step into the second level, the existence, and no be <laughs> caught for this, yeah. they're deluded as fuck. Yeah. yeah. Seriously deluded, because you're not going to get away with this. We all get caught. The truth always comes out. Yeah. It's been proven time and time and time again. Yeah, they can hide it or they won't, but it will come out. 
And my belief is, uh, I have a great belief in there being a second level to this, it's just level two Jumanji. Aye. That's going with you. Yeah. That's the baggage that's going with you. No, no, your cottage that you spent all these years and da da da, or your tatty field, or all your amounts of money that you made. No, no, no. It's what you've done. Yeah. That's what, and whether you're biblical or no, you'll be judged on that. Mm. And I, I didn't understand how these idiots have become so. Well, I didn't believe in that, so I'm not happy. You know? <laughs> I'll just smother it over. No, so they're going to get caught. I mean, we are where we are now. We look, and that speech that he did at the rally um, mm-hmm. the other weekend was. Fantastic. It was well worded, well spoken. It seemed how can I put it? It seemed logical and everything. There's nothing that can be done for him. The last two minutes, I think it is, where he speaks um, and says, uh, you know, what has been and happened to him has been and done. Nothing. We can't do nothing there. We just cannot let this happen to someone else, right? So, looks where he is at the moment. Is the likelihood, I mean, I think it's a 20-year sentence, wasn't it, Sandra? 20-year minimum. Minimum, minimum, yeah. right. So next year, he's done 20 years. Yes. So does that lad get out after 20 years? Or is there some other hurdle that that... Because this has revolved for 19 years, to use Alan's thought process, right? This has been revolving, going round and round in circles. There's now too many bumps now where that's going to fall off, that cog is going to break down. It's been running for too long. It's been revolving for t- too long. It needs to evil. So that lad is due to get out 20 years, or his sentence is 20 years. Minimum. Minimum, aye. Is yeah, there anything is. can stand in the way of that now? Oh, yeah. <laughs> could oh, yeah. you explain maybe what could stand in the way under, of his sentence now? Under normal circumstances, when it's getting to the end of the, the punishment part, which in yeah. this case was 20 years... The, the process starts to prepare them for release. Right. So, so move them to lower category prisons. Right. Uh, Train them for freedom. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Normally, they would have to have done courses and admitted yep. their part or their, their behaviours or whatever in order to show that... that show they're remorse. Yeah, uh, in order to show that they're, they're better people than they were when they went in. Yeah. Um, Luke refused to do all of that. And they ran an experimental... In, Elementary um, program, or this is what they told them, where instead of having to do um, the courses and yada yada, it would be a psychological assessment, and and if that came out well enough, they look at progressing and and letting them work towards release. So far, so good. The yeah. assessment came back, all good, and they said right. We'll, we'll put them on the path to progression that, you know, he'll eventually start getting days out and things like that, and, yeah. and then he'll, he'll make release, which would be next year. Now, th- they were too late starting that process, so, so you're talking another three years because he's got to do the whole thing. Yeah. And then uh, there was a decision that they'd have to do another psychological assessment on psychological assessment. Uh. And... <laughs> While they were waiting for the psychological assessment on the psychological assessment, he couldn't be progressed. So he's now in limbo. And then, and this is a blinder, and then the police said as part of this process, they were going to do a deep dive into the case files to look for any similar offences in his history. He was arrested and detained at the age of 15 Mm -hmm. for murder. What do they think they're going to find in his first 15 years that they didn't bloody find before they took him to trial? Past life regression. (laughs) 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 It's insane. Um, And then, now that's just Uh, recently, this, this deep file thing. And we were talking on the phone, and I was like, what are they reviewing? Mm -hmm. They've destroyed all the evidence. Aye. What (laughs) are they reviewing? But again, you know, because you've just said it, that the process, the ball will not start rolling until tick, tick, tick. Yeah. So if 
they've got to then reevaluate on that psychological profile of Buffalo Bill. They're going to recycle that and mm-hmm. get that. And then they throw in that. Every one of them is a wedge that will not stop yes. that process rolling in. It's bizarre to think that anything that you know anybody's doing, trying to push the system, you admit that there's a failing within their system. It's their system. It's no other system. We didn't. We have no hand in it whatsoever. Yeah. But we can see that there's something wrong, irrelevant. If you know whether looked in it or no, but their system is wrong. And you think, well, is all of this? Is this is why they keep throwing extra wee spanners in? Because at some point, somebody's going to find out the truth here. Yeah. And if they just keep stalling and stalling yeah. and stalling while there's mere noise makes. Yeah. yeah. How bizarre. It's, it's th- there was never supposed to be a me. Yeah, People were know. never no. supposed to know. Oof. And then once it started coming out little bits at a time and, and more and more as time went on, y- you just watch the way they react. They, they spit the dummy. They throw the toys out the pram. Yeah. More and more every time something like this happens. And the thing is, Luke knows... Luke knows that every time we, th- we do stuff like this, the backlash is on him. Yeah. And he said, Bring it on. Bring it on. What's yeah. the worst <laughs> they can do to me now? You know? <laughs> <laughs> They've done uh, their worst. What can they do to me so now? When you've been that low, there's, no, there's nowhere else to go. Yeah. And that's where I'm saying that, you no, know, being in Shit Creek, your mess is selling after a while, just become just it. Yeah. Pervious yeah. to all the bullshit. It is a shame that that's the way you had to, you know, the level he had to go to, you think, well, just keep doing it because they're not going to do it to me. I, when I watched James's podcast and I listened to the phone call, I think at no point was it me, me, me. No interest. No. It's just no. the system's broken and it should stop. It should yeah. stop being allowed to do these things in progress because it shouldn't. You know, as soon as you get one failing, you think, right, okay, hold on, wait a minute, let's, let's pay some other clowns to have a review, rather yeah. than reviewing his psychological profile and revi- review the psycho... Yeah. No, <sighs> review them. Yeah. yeah. Review the failings that they've had and see if anything, because it's the, the man with the hole in the, the, the dike and the plug one hole and then another one, another one, another one. It just keeps happening because it's, it's everywhere. The injustices I've saw just through my own lifetime, I've just saw it being broken, 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 broken. You think, well, what's the point? Yeah. Try to explain it to James. Then he just, then he get involved in the system. As soon as you go in, it's like going on the waltzers. You'll no get off. And when you do come off, you're going to feel very sick that you actually went on there in the yeah. first place. Yeah. Yeah. And you pay for the privilege. It just needs something done, something done. And I think everything you're doing and everything that anyone else is doing, certainly trying to prove these injustices, it has to go because we have to keep kicking the door until mm-hmm. somebody opens that fucking door and s- lets us in. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, ultimately they should be working for us. We are the people. Well, that, that's what I keep saying. You know, they did this in our names. And I know a lot of people now are very, very uncomfortable with the thought that what was done here yeah. was done in their names. That's exactly. You know, if, yeah. if, if this was put to a vote, guys, if they came to you as, as a community... Uh-huh. And said, right, we've got th- this 14-year-old here by the scruff. Here's what we're going to do to him, right? We're going to make up all this rubbish about him. Uh, we're going to let everything else go away because we want to put him in prison for 20 years, even though we've got nothing on him. Uh-huh. Right, everybody that's in agreement, step forward. How many people do you think uh-huh. would do that? Yeah. But it's because they're not asked. It's, it's that assumed consent. Consent, uh-huh. Well... They can't assume that they've got that consent anymore. That they are, yeah. You know, people are going to have too to much show noise. Them. There's there's too many happenings. That's there's that's yeah. why Aunt says the same thing. It's like shutting this place down. Yeah. And you want the community to have a voice? No, because no. the voices can be very very loud. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, when you look at the way that they've brought it down, the miners, everything that had a body, a collective of people yeah. had a voice. So the smash Every it workers all, unions, everything. you name it. That's it. All the unions smash yeah. them all. Why? Yeah. Because they have a voice and they've got power. We're the only ones with power. We decide. Uh. Yeah, but we elect you. We're the ones that put you in these places. We pay your fucking wages. How can I no walk in, get the guy that's done something wrong, and say, you're fucking fired? Alan Sugar them. You're fired. Mm. Why? Because you're a lying bastard. Mm. I uh. bet it was, it was a clerical mistake. I don't care, mate. Somebody's life is hanging in the balance. Somebody's lost a life. Your clerical error is fucking things up. Go. Yeah. It would happen the other way around if the table was turned and it was me. Exactly. I get an opportunity. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, back to my original question. 
Is this laddie going to get out next year? No. No. No, he can't. That's, that's that whole no. chain of command. They yeah. have to evaluate him, and if the police throw something else in, the sp- you know, the spanner in the works proverbially, it stalls that process, which by the time they actually start the process, how long do you think it is? A three-year cycle? Usually three years. But but something that's really interesting, and I think a lot of people didn't understand this as well, um, is what, what Luke has to convince the parole board of, right, yeah. huh. is that he is a manageable risk. Yeah. So so not, not it used to be that he's, he's reduced the likelihood of his uh, yeah. offending behaviour of yeah. which he has none. So how he reduces that I'm not entirely sure. Um but but it's changed over over the years and it's now um he's got to demonstrate that he's a manageable risk. How does he demonstrate that if they won't let him out into yeah. the community to show that he can behave himself in the community. That's the first thing. Um, secondly, one of the conditions that they've tried to put on him is that, and this is right now, mm-hmm. sorry mate, if you get the chance to see this, um, if he communicates with the media yep. or attempts to communicate with the media, they will perceive that as an increase in his risk of violence. He's not going to get left alone the minute he walks out of there. No. And I'm not talking about us podcasters that are no, no. sitting having a blether like this. The media's going to be aware of him when he comes out. Not just the media. Well, aye. Well, it leaves you stumped, doesn't it? It really? totally does. totally leaves you stumped. I mean, there's... What does the laddie do? Where does he go? It's going to be... See, because they're, they're trying to put this media thing on him, that he'll do this and that and the other, yeah. you know that for the, the old school... <laughs> football hooligans that your presence can incite a riot yeah. now his presence outside parliament could end up with somebody smashing a window <gasps> just because he's it there could. and people can but that's the yeah. likelihood that when you think about it it's again it's a wee boy hiding behind the wall mm-hmm. it's yeah. somebody else defending that wee boy because it was never him yeah. so how can he incite the riot if you know, th- there wouldn't yeah. be any crowd outside parliament had his innocence no been robbed, if that was the case. Yeah. So I can see why they do not want him talking. But, no. but unfortunately, no. He has to have a voice because he's going to talk on behalf of the victim. Again, that's where the justice is. Even knowing they put that condition on him right now. Yeah. That was one of the decisions, one of the reasons for the decision to speak to the crowd right. at oh the protest. Yeah, so yeah. Was to say, you will not silence me. Yeah, and and he's absolutely adamant. I th- uh, take my hat off to him. That uh, that takes guts. Yeah, you know, you, we've dangled freedom in front of you, but with all these conditions, and you say shove the freedom. Well, that's the, the ones. That the ones for me that they say shove it up your ass yeah. because I'm no bothered. If if it was the guy that was just kidding on and sees that somebody says to him, "Oh, by the way, do you know that if you had said that, then they can't convict you in that," and they think, "Oh, right, oh, so it was me, but if there's a chance I can think of." Yeah. You become a martyr. No, if you're telling them, listen, you're going to put restrictions on me, fuck off. It's the same as the guy that goes up on the roof or, no, the other laddies, the, the, the guys, uh, T.C. Campbell and you know, yeah. Steele. So the things that they've done to prove their innocence is unbelievable. This guy being able to say, look, you're not going to silence me. I'm not going away. You can day me in. It's the, you know, in life, it would be the worst thing that happens. But it's no, because what's happened isn't they going to go away. Exactly. And Who that's the worst thing for them, is this is what you've driven it to. Yeah. So brilliant. Imagine he swallowed the pill and took it and put his hands up, did all the oh. programs, said, do you know what? It was me. I did it. Did all the other wee programs in the prison to say, yes, I'm a reformed character. Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll spend... Five years doing that, four years doing that, three months doing that. When would he have got out? Probably oh, on the on the twenty year mark on the dot. Right, so he would he still have done the twenty year then. He w- that, so that was, that was, that was the minimum. Minimum. Right, I'm, aye, right, okay. that. Yeah. right. But that was, that was a, a law that they introduced when it, they had to specify yeah. in a life sentence. Specify what you must. Yeah, right, okay. minimum sentence. But his sentence was actually without limit of time. Without limited time. Yeah. And so when was, what age was he when he was convicted? 16. Wow. So he was 16. So they managed to hang it out until he was 16. 
I remember getting done for disqualified driving. I said, but I'm only 15. I didn't have a license, you arsehole. And that's what I called him. And he says, exactly. So who's the arsehole now? And I thought, good point. <laughs> I can't have a license. So I must be disqualified because I can't obtain a license. Yeah. But they hanged that out until I was 16. So they got a conviction. It, what they did with Luke, um, and, and it was one of the first things that I learned because all this time they're not arresting them, they're not arresting them. And then 14th April, bam, there's hundreds of them come through the door and, and I'm sitting thinking, what changed? What changed? Yeah. They had nothing. Brand what changed? <laughs> um, what changed was the 110-day rule oh. where they had to bring them to trial within 110 days or oh, let them go. Oh. And they waited until that 110-day period would span his 16th birthday so that he'd be an adult. So they got it over. Uh, and that's, that's why they that's left the it. Yeah, because that's <laughs> forward thinking. That you know, all the time leading up to then, oh no, can we, can we, can we hold no, it we off, can hold we it off? Bang. Yeah, yeah. So if if they had tried to go prior, would that meant that he would have been tried as, as uh, a juvenile? A juvenile. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a sly bastard. Uh -huh. Just the games, and you think, come on. Yeah, say, you're playing with people's lives. This isn't a game. You're, you're playing, playing with that. children's lives That's here. Again, yeah. the way that they no, if it was all proven, that it definitely was not him. It was some. If somebody says, "Look, I'm really sorry, but it was me." The deathbed confession. Da 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 da. Everybody that is child abuse. Yes. <laughs> and then what? What society is that tolerable? Not to me, as mm. a, as a, a, a victim of these stupid people. No, because you potentially it's a Frankenstein monster. Mm -hmm. You create. Because within me, there is a hatred that's in me, but I manage it, no bother at all. You put me in a cage for 20 years, and I'll show you hatred towards mm -hmm. the society. And that's what they would be hoping for. By no, no, we need to see that you've managed this. You've managed yeah, yeah. Listen, I've been wrong, but you want me to manage that. You want me to accept that. Yeah, give me the KY jelly and the lube, and just, yeah, fuck me. Because mm -hmm. that's all you've done for 20 years. Yeah. And however long yeah. they're going to play this silly charade by... You you educate yourself, and we we'll, we'll see. Let's let's see how far he goes. How many years stays? What have we lied in twenty four years? Like, how does that work? How do you let people go that far? How yeah. many more of these is there going to be? How many more no. podcasts? I mean, you've got the biggest guys doing it to the smallest podcasters doing it. How many more of these does there have to be before somebody stops the wheel and says, "I think it has to stop." It has to come. I I thought, <coughs> excuse me, um. When I saw, I didn't expect the Channel 5 documentary to have the success it did. Uh. The, the 2007 one with um, Frontline Scotland, it just kind of went, yeah. you know, it showed and it disappeared. Uh. So, being perfectly honest, that was sort of my expectation for the Channel 5 one as well. Yeah. So, when it went absolutely mental, I was completely unprepared for it. I had no idea what to do. How to deal with uh, it. Sandra, I remember sitting watching it and sitting back in my seat and thinking, bloody hell, mm. I remember that story. Yeah. I remember, uh, and I said to you already, I remember thinking back then, Christ, the guy's 14, no danger. Yeah. But they're saying he must have done it. Well, well, who am I? And before you know it, it's the Channel 5 documentary before I'm sitting back, what, 15, 20 years later, yeah. going, oh my God. It's the amount of people that have come out, the professionals that know what they're talking about. Yeah. Aye, yes, exactly like that. Criminologists, Aye. lawyers, and every yep. one of them that sat there. Detectives. Think, well done, because they are the whistleblowers on that shitty yep. system that they say, we couldn't have convicted on that. Mm -hmm. Fucking no chance. Not a chance. But we could have on that, we could have on that, we could have on that. I think that's it, keep going, keep doing it. Again, that wee lassie pushing it for the back room, it works for me. If she's between yourself, every one of these small acts is just cutting away at this thing just to knock that house of cards yeah. down. It works. It, it, it yeah. never in any way. But no, to me personally, if something was to come of this and put a name to somebody that brought it down, that wee lassie should be remembered for that. Yeah. yeah. Because uh, th that was the best bit about that whole documentary. The real people that were behind it saying, no, this mm -hmm. is wrong. Totally wrong. Yeah. To be recognised, brilliant. So, can you imagine? What else do you, What else do you want to say, Sandra? To anyone that might be watching this this far, what is it? Uh, uh, whether that comes from uh, Corinne, Luke, yourself, what what message do you want to tell anybody watching? 
I know it would be the same from all three of us, and it's stand and be counted. If you don't know this stuff, go find it. There's plenty there now to to yeah. demonstrate what went so horribly wrong here. But liking on Facebook or you know, uh, retweeting things like that, those help. Yeah. But what we need is people's physical presence to to say, "Hang on, I, I'm not, I'm not going to put up with this. I'm not going to have this done." in my name and while we've built really big um, social media following yeah. we need those people to act and that, that means joining us on protest, that means writing to MSPs and if they write back their nonsense, go back at them again and again and again, it means demanding answers and, mm. and it needs people, lots of people to keep doing that, keep asking, keep pushing for the answers um, because they will tell you to go away, they'll tell you to go away yeah. again and again and again but if th- there's more of us than there are of them, if you're all pushing it, if you're all demanding that they they be held accountable and that means not just liking and, and you know yeah. following on social media, then as Luke said, we have a chance to change things but we need the people to help us yeah it's definitely the people's fight. Definitely the people's 100%. fight, aye. Yeah. 100%. There's 27,000, I think, the last time I heard, they uh, signed a petition. How do many petition signatures do we need for them to listen? In Scotland. I know they've kicked you out already, yeah. but how many do they need for them to listen? In Scotland, there is no number. There is no number, but Parliament down south, over 100,000? Once you get to 100,000, you're guaranteed a, a parliamentary question, a parliamentary debate. Right. Um, we got... Uh, if you take our, our mm-hmm. numbers in Scotland, yeah, um, about ten percent, right, of that number. So, so a thousand should have got us, right, a parliamentary a question. Ticket. Should have got it, right. We had twenty five thousand when we handed it in. Yeah, it's almost twenty eight thousand. Twenty eight thousand now. Wh- why? Why do three Scots have to express their concerns to get the Parliament to respond? But every one Englishman has uh-huh. got a concern. Why is that? Our, our devolved government was supposed to give us more say. Yeah. Mm. So they they can't keep hiding, and and this circular thing that the, the, the MPs are doing, we can't uh, interfere with the justice system because separation of powers and Parliament and the justice system, and the Lord Advocate, just saying who happens to be the head of the justice system, and a minister. Right. Uh, where's the separation of powers? It's not there. Very smart. Very, very smart. How do we get this guy out of prison for a crime he's not committed, in our opinion? We have to... Uh, we There may be some fundraising coming up as well. We have to get these reports, we have to get these samples released. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we need to get them tested, we need to get the reports pulled together to prove that the evidence that they had was shockingly bad but also to prove to to, to discount Luke yeah. as a contributor to that that remaining evidence unfortunately there's very little left now um, but there still, sh- still should be enough that we can have um, forensically tested so I've been speaking to a forensics expert that deals with fingernail scrapings right. and have been sent a number of cases not in the UK, obviously, uh-huh. um, where fi- they, they, they tested fingernail scrapings in cases years later that had shown up nothing at the time. Right. And somebody's been convicted. Years later, they've tested them using modern um, techniques uh-huh. and found somebody else's DNA there. So this guy's done all that time, and it wasn't him. Right. Wow. One of the things that survived in this case is the fingernail scrapings. So, it's things like that. You know, yeah. we, we might have to, we might have to find ways to get the money together because these are overseas uh, experts, and I'm not saying we have to bring them here, but I don't know if you saw the the conditions that the police put on releasing the samples. Uh-huh. We'd have a hard time sending them over there because they're not going to let us. Another question I've got: What's the fear? What's the fear now to say? 
the the officials, the judicial system, whoever, it's put that. their hands up and say, well, they've had 20 years of earnings, so they're maybe reaching retirement age now anyway. What's the point? What's the problem with putting their hands up and saying, do you know what? We got this wrong. Because you've collapsed the system. The system's in place. It's held up. Look at the amount of people that hold that. But would that, that not then improve their system to say, look, we've put our hands up to that. We've changed this. We've put this in place. That can not happen. This can not happen. Because it's it, them it trying is. to get the trust of the people back. Because you'll not trust them. I didn't trust them. Yeah. You can't yeah, trust them. Yeah, but you what it, it does, the price. Yeah. after the, like, the Birmingham Sex the Guild before, the, the inquiries, the, the new legislation that came on the back of that, that was, that was um, pushed as to rebuild the trust of the people. Yeah. So, so that's how they used it back then. Um, us calling for the independent review, when you look at what they did with Hillsborough, mm -hmm. and, and they had to be absolutely held to ransom to, to have that review, and then they just kept throwing them under the bus. Mm -hmm. Even as they were finding the police wrongdoing, they're still chucking them under the bus. So it's... It's get it's finding the point at which their desperation to um, rebuild their own reputations yeah. is greater than their need to keep everything covered up, and we, we need to get it to that point. But like I say, if they're if they're at the point of retirement, they've earned the big money, they've got the big pension, there's no need to rebuild their reputation because they got it wrong, they've done it, they can slope off into the hills. You know what I mean? The individual. I is that as a, yeah. I don't know if it's about... It's not about the individuals at this point, then. No, no, I no. don't know if it's about the, the ones that are close to retirement. Because uh -huh. you've still got young police officers right. who, who aren't even police officers when this happened, towing the party line. Right. That's a saying, uh, well, you know, it was properly investigated and they knew it was him. Mm. You're like, mate, you were six. Aye. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> what yeah. are you talking about? So, so it's a cultural thing as much as a personal thing. Mm -hmm. That the the culture of the police, generation on generation on generation, says we we never admit to getting it wrong, and that that just passes down. Or or we wouldn't have these younger officers now, still protecting them, still yeah. defending them. See, that's what I've said to you that every everybody that does it, they always they Sandra says we'll throw somebody under the bus. You're looking at the driver. It's the fucking driver you want. And it's the driving force mm -hmm. behind it. So it's no individual policeman who then signs up and joins up and says, listen, we never ever get it wrong. We're always right. You put on your suit and you become powerful. You become this new entity that tells people what to do. You talk at them. Then you talk to them. Once again, when you were a wee guy, the police served as something else. Once we're punching the lug... Jeez, wow, that just knocked some sense into me. No, the sensible side is don't trust them. And as you can see, why would you trust them? They yeah. can make things up. They're the absolute illusionists. They'll conjure you. And you, you'll come at the other side like, wow, how did that happen? Ah, well, y you, you know yourself because when you told me the conversations that you've had with them and they says, look, this is what happens and this is what we've got to do and unfortunately, you know, it'll swing in their favour and you're like, oh, right, uh, because you're listening to the guy that has been trained into confusing you and you think, oh, well, it must be right because they're the guys. It's when you see too many injustices to say, I think you're actually wrong. I don't trust you anymore. How, d how do you win that back? Because, you know, where you're saying, retire, retire, the police force can't retire. No. So for them to put their hands up and admit that they got it wrong. Again, at some point, somebody, as in the people, should be saying, well, let's just get rid of this. Oh, let's start again. How do we do this again? Mm. How do you do? No, I, I don't know how to do it. I've not got a clue. Me, personally, I'd knock it all down. Knock the whole thing down. Yeah. Whatever's left, let's see what's there. Because, again, the people that come out in that documentary, I'd have them in front of me. Mm -hmm. I'd have them representing me. I'd have them judging me. No, because they seem to be people with vision. They see injustice. That's what we need. We yeah. didn't want people that can cover up and other ones that say, I bet it was wrong. Shh, don't fucking say that, okay? It was right, and that's how we stick. We just stick by that because we stick together. All right, okay, great. It's an us and them. Mm -hmm. uh, no, it shouldn't be a divide between us. It should be inclusive. It's one hot topic that's not going to go away until this guy's released. No. And then it's justice for Jodie as much as Luke. Probably more so for Jodie. Luke's 
said it himself, what's happened to him has happened to him. Yeah. So this is realistically it's justice for Jodie Jones. You know? And and the the sides that are as you were saying now that the yeah. guy, you know, give him another ten years, that's vengeance. Yeah. And 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 who gains anything yeah, from that, that? I woke up to that this morning, you know. Ah, I gave him another ten years. I just uh, and you know, and I looked at the profile, and that is a profile. It's real. It, it's someone's opinion, oh and yeah. I didn't bother engaging with it because I just thought ah, I'm not going to bother. And I think it is actually someone that I have said to you already. Look, go and do a wee bit of research. Yeah, go and have a look. Go and do what I did. You know, sit back and think for a moment. But anyway, yeah. Sorry, Sandra, I jumped on you. Aye. Shall we break it there? Have so. we all said enough? Have you said enough, I Sandra? I think so. Yeah. Um, I'm going to sneeze. You're going to sneeze. Go for it. You have a sneeze. You have a sneeze, and we'll take oh it no, over I see here. I spoke about it, and it's going away. So I, I uh, did, my end up with all of this is, is that I've watched so many podcasts, I've seen so many things online. I'm not a reader; I'm a listener and a watcher, and everything directed me to want to put this on my podcast or our podcast or the podcast, whatever it is, and just another form of debate, another discussion to help maybe right or wrong in life, who knows what will happen. I've seen some of the biggest podcasters out there discussing this and I just still can't believe that I'm sat here discussing it now. Um, I do want to say to the, the families involved that, you know, I have no opinion of you as people, you as families. The situation is god-awful and the one person that needs justice is Jodie Jones. And that's my opinion. Uh, I don't think, from what I've seen and heard, that we have it here with this guy, uh, Luke Mitchell, in prison. It's just my opinion. There are millions out there. And that's my part and comment on it is. So the the Jones family, I don't know you. I don't have an opinion against you. And I'm sorry for your loss, to be, to be honest. And that's where I want to finish. Alan, you want to say anything? I think we'd cap it there. Mines would be the, the injustice. It, it wouldn't matter who you are, at what stage, what crime. If mm -hmm. the system can get it wrong, then no, the system should be brought to book. That would work for me. Sandra? Um, basically, just thank you guys for adding to the, the number of voices out there mm -hmm. and for, for opening another avenue where people can come and try and find the truth and... and just stop and think. This could happen to anybody. This could happen to anybody. Mm. And like you say, Jodie's never had justice. And yeah. that's not good enough in the end. No. This time I'm going to refrain from playing out with my wee jolly song because I think this is bigger than me having a jolly. So anyway, so there. thank you very much, everybody. I'll just play out with that. James and Alan talk to Dr. Sandra Lean regarding her role in the Luke Mitchell case. Your chat, your way. Let's talk. Thank you very much.